Three, two, one, Thorium point. Save. We're gonna drop down on the close side, right here. Trying not to kill yourself by hitting the thing. You wanna jump wide like this, and then you can swim to the port. So there you go, good job everyone. Go into- I'm dead. I, I, I jumped, I never jumped this side before, I would jump too far. Uh, you have to jump wide, like, uh, like kind of cut it tight to the thing, oh. or you have to backpedal. Oh. Yeah, you have to jump then backpedal. Oh. <laughs> Yo, oh, poor, poor Swifty, dude. Poor Swifty. <laughs> so here's what we're going to be doing tonight. I know we got some people who are like kind of fresh 60s or, or newer 60s. Kind of wanted to put this run together to get everybody on the same page. Kind of get everybody up to pace uh, in terms of making sure you're prepared to go into BWL and everything. And, and to be honest, I think you guys did a fine job in BWL last night. And I think you guys can do really well tonight, too. There's also other people in this run that are capable of, of, of doing their BWL stuff stuff too. That's just how it pans out. Like I thought if we focus in one spot and then I come MC with you guys and kind of make sure everybody's basically following instructions properly, doing mechanics properly. So, sweet. Faux King is going to be TPS tank. Fraggy is going to be a defensive tank. Uh, we should be good to pull. Skull is going to be Faux King and then X is going to be Fraggy. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and pull. I know we have a couple people here, like typically we, we don't want to have more than one rep paladin in a raid. It, it's a little bit different because I'm here. But if you're, if you're a rep paladin, okay, why are we losing aggro? Make sure to watch your threat, guys. And I'm gonna be a little bit more critical just because I, I think people need it, right? Uh, if, you, if you're a hybrid, you need to go like super try hard and make sure you have the right gear and stuff. Like right now, I'm looking at like Thornheart. Your gear right now is like PvP gear. So like you have in like Lobbering Your Shoulders, Judgment Crown, like you're, you're basically wearing like a PvP set. Now you have other stuff that's really good, like Savage Gladiator Chain and, and Blood Mill Gauntlets are pretty good. You need to try and, and focus on getting like your Black Dragon scale and stuff for PvE. Because that's your that's your pre-raid best stuff. I'm just using you as an example because I play Rhett and I, I know Rhett a little bit better. Kill the Lava Spawn. Everybody needs to kill the Lava Spawn. So we need to make sure as soon as the Lava Spawn comes up on the Fire Lord, we attack the Lava Spawn. Okay, everybody get here. You can dismiss your pets and then we're going to jump off. Okay, so... I got this. I got this. All right, so, so we can go ahead and pull that guy up. We don't want to run down there because it's going to pull aggro from the other guys. You need a taunt rotation on this guy. Fraggy, can you pick up that Annihilator? This guy, everybody needs to come down. Everybody needs to come down because he evade bugs. <clears throat> so either everybody up there or everybody down. Okay, so there's a lava surger back here. So what we need to do is we need to get in two stacks. So bring the surger down here because the surger is going to keep surging us. So kill the Goron. Get in two stacks. Melee stack and range stack for the surger. These mechanics are very avoidable in MC. The thing is we need to have people making sure they're doing the mechanics right. If you get out of practice, you end up not doing things right in the later raids. So, Axon Roth, are you did you taunt there? How'd you get aggro? No, I'm just spamming Sunder, so we have it up. Okay, that's another thing. If you are a warrior, nobody should hit Sunder more than one time. Every single warrior needs to hit Sunder right away. When you start attacking a mob, every single warrior, Fury Warrior, Prot Warrior, everything. Let's get D-Curses out whenever these guys do Hysteria. Especially in our Majors, 50% in Elect is pretty bad. So all the Majors should decurse yourselves, and then uh, focus on decreasing locks and priests and whatnot too. Listen, here's the pathing. We want to stay a little bit tighter here on the left side, and then we're going to pull the Annihilator. So we're going to kill the Annihilator, and we're going to pull the Fire Lord back to us, right? The tanks are going to pull it back to us. Always, as soon as a Lava Spawn comes up, stop attacking the Fire Lord and attack the Lava Spawn. Kill the Lava Spawn, and then we go back to killing the Fire Lord. If you stay on the far side of where you are now, when we pull the Surger, if you get surged, you won't get knocked off in the Lava. Fo King, would you go ahead and pull? So see, because they were on the close side, you saw Fraggy and Fo King were on the close side, like where, where we are right now, they didn't get knocked off. If they'd been on the far side, they would've gotten knocked off. That is what I'm saying, like we're, we're so geared, and, and this is so unfortunately easy that we can ignore the mechanics, but if we ignore the mechanics, this kind of stuff adds up long term. Uh, this is another mechanic that again, is semi-ignorable, not completely, but semi-ignorable, but we need to make sure we do things right. So turn on nameplates or something, and we're going to pull these guys and tank them all together, and they all need to die at the same time. So if you see a guy is particularly low or another guy is particularly high, either stop attacking him or make sure to attack the guy who's particularly high. Uh, Foking pull skull, fr uh, Fraggy pull square, and then Axe and Roth and uh, Axe and Roth and Praise Keanu. You guys, you guys pick up some individually as well. Okay, so pull him back a little bit more, a little bit more. Don't DPS. Pull him back a little bit more. Stop DPS. Stop DPS. Stop DPS. Get him with the smoke stack. Okay, now, now we, now we uh, do damage. And you want to make sure that they're all dying at about the same rate. So look at their, look at their health bars. Make sure it's all good. Square's a little high. Moon's a little high. Triangle is really low. So, again, it's like little stuff like this that adds up, right? 
Th these are the kind of things that end up making BWL difficult. It's just making sure that you're doing things proper. So here's how Lucifron works. He does a uh, pulsing magic effect and a, and a curse effect that we need to have everybody dispelled on. So we want everybody to constantly be getting decursed night kit. That's your primary concern on this fight is decurses. Yes. And mages also you need to make sure you decurse yourselves and other people too. For the magic effect, if you can cleanse magic, make sure you're cleansing magic on everyone so they don't randomly take 2,000 damage. Also, Lucifron does a mind control. This mind control is dispellable by priests. You do not want to do a rank two dispel. You want to do a rank one dispel on whoever gets mind controlled. The reason why you want to use rank one instead of rank two is because if you use a rank two, it'll also dispel one of your buffs and you don't want that to happen. But a, a rank one will dispel the mind control. I want us to kill the flame walker protectors first. So we kill skull, then square, and then we're going to kill X. Fraggy, I want you to tank the boss. Voking tank skull, and we will have Praise Keanu tank square. Axenroth, be ready to pick up anything in case something gets lost or whatever. If one of the tanks get mind controlled, it's immediately taunt for the tank to got mind controlled. Okay, so we're going to kill uh, skull first. Okay, next we're going to kill square. Dispel on Genzod. Thank you. Okay, now on Lucy. There's a macro for that, Priest. I will get that macro to you uh, soon. I need a decurse, decurse, decurse. Decurses. Junior decurses. For six months. All spells and ability costs. So it's 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 not just mages, it's everybody. Or it's not just casters, it's everybody, it's not just mana. It's rage, it's it's everything. Energy. Okay, good. So here's another thing, like so so looking at people's gears and stuff, like You guys need to make sure that you're doing the things that you need to do to, to show up in pre-raid bis, right? I, I mentioned I mentioned hybrids earlier. There's dungeons and plenty of things to do outside of raid to make sure that you have good gear. For example, using something like Drake Fire Amulet and MC like for DPS isn't a good idea. A lot of this stuff is like factored in whenever we're doing loot council and stuff, because it's like okay, if these people are, it's not always about the biggest upgrade. It's always it's it's more so about okay, these guys are putting in a considerable amount of effort to to show up prepared and all this stuff as well. That's always something that's considered too. Do you want me to go? So, well, here's how Magmadar works. Guys, Magmadar does a fear, so if you're a dwarf priest, you should be basically tab target, uh, fear warding everyone in the raid right now. Uh, and let's go ahead and do paladin buffs again. Uh, I was hoping we'd have it for, for this fight, but we didn't, just because we were explaining stuff. Basically, you want to go through and you just want to target each guy, especially melee DPS because they're closer range. Range DPS, not as much. Uh, so we get everybody with a fear ward. Uh, warriors, what you can do is you can pop recklessness on this guy. You're immune to fear uh, with death wish, all that stuff, right? And you can do big damage on this guy and try and burn him down as much as possible. Stay out of the fire whenever he spits fire on the ground. And other than that, he doesn't really have any particular mechanics that stick out that I, I can think. Am I forgetting something? I, I can't even remember if there's anything else. Don't step in fire and fear, that's about it. Yeah, I can't and, think uh, of else. Hunter, Hunter Oh, Hunter Trank Shot, that's a big one, right. So we need a Hunter Trank Shot rotation. It's settled already. Yeah, You've yeah, already got uh, it settled, okay, good. So make sure the Hunters do the Trank Shot rotation. As soon as he's enraged, you gotta do the Trank Shot. Axenroth, remove your Blessing of Salvation, because you still need to climb threat in case something happens. The, none of the tanks should have Blessing of Salvation, because you always need to try and climb threat. Okay, a ton of melee got feared. So go ahead and pop your cooldowns, warriors. Pop it after, pop Recklessness and Death Wish after the first fear and watch your threat. Taunt resisted. So you see that Foking's taunt resisted, he even has a macro for it. So what does that mean? That means another tank has to step in and try and taunt. There's a fire on the left side, move to the right side. The little fire on the right, that's just the, uh, the douses. Okay, so there's another fire, move to the right again. Move to the right again. Foking, you can even reposition him, you can pull him back a little bit. All right. My internet went out during that. Oh, oh shoot. Toe oh, app. Okay. Okay. So here's how this boss works. Uh, whenever we pull this boss, he does something called like Fist of Ragnaros or something. And uh, just it just keeps happening. Or Fist of Gehennis. I don't know what it is. But it's an, it's an AoE stun. Everybody gets stunned by it. If you are a melee DPS, or really if you're anyone, if you, want to, if, if you want to do it, but really melee DPS, you should use a free action potion. The free action potion makes you immune to stun for 30 seconds. You pop a fap, tanks pull, uh, right one of you fap, or like fap right on the pull. There's really two main things that happen here. Or really there's three things. The fist, there's rain of fire. Don't stand in the rain of fire. Open your eyes and make sure there's not fire all over your head. Uh, and then number three, there is a mortal strike curse that goes on people. You need to decurse. Night kid, that is that is your primary concern here. And also mages, make sure you're decursing. Anyone but tanks need to use the action potions. 
Uh, you I don't have, have to, but it's a it's a good idea to use them as a DPS as well. Okay. So again, guys, with this run, we have a lot of people who are like new 60s, fresh 60s, and I decided to run with them to kind of help make sure everybody's up to par and kind of knows everything. So Fraggy, you do the pull and do it tight to this side so we don't get an Annihilator with us. If the yeah. Annihilator comes, if he comes, then uh, praise Keanu, I want you to pick up the Annihilator. Yeah, or we can, or we can banish it. Whatever. Okay, let's kill that first Flamewalker. Go ahead and faff if you have it. Everybody Sunder. First attack should be Sunder. First attack. Every warrior, first attack should be Sunder on every mob. If everybody Sunders once, you immediately get five stacks fire, and you maximize fire. the damage. And then finally, we're going to kill Gehennis. Everybody Sunder. Good job on Curse of Recklessness. Nice big Diaz. That's fans Diaz. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, dude. Okay, so the Reign of Fire, so we got to move. Not standing in the Reign of Fire. We got to move in tanks. Okay, That's good nice. job. Uh, Night Slayer gloves and Salamander scale pants. This has been really good loot so far. I switch in on S fan. It's because I play a rep pally and there are a bunch of warriors in chat who are jealous. They get mad every time I get a piece of loot. I'm telling you, dude, 99% of the time, I see people like complaining about a rep paladin. It's a warrior molding because he took his loot. That's literally what it is. I was gonna have two warriors. That's literally, I guarantee you, 99% of the time. I want the warlocks to banish just to. Just to like do the mechanics, right? Uh, so, so Fraggy, you tank the three. Sorry, you tank the five, and then the other three. I want banish. Lazy man get moon. Molly Wapped gets star, and Valestra gets square. Okay, so you guys focus on banishing those guys the whole time. Uh, everybody else is going to DPS Gar, and Foking will tank Gar. Fraggy will tank all the ads. He'll take the big damage. Uh, we need to make sure we have healers keeping Fraggy up because he is going to take a lot of damage. Foking will just be tanking Gar. McDowell, McDowell, I want you doing freedom on Fraggy. To, to make sure that he can position the ads and stuff freely. Okay, uh, ready check, and we're gonna pull. Okay, so everybody on Gar. McDowell, get a freedom. Fraggy, pull him back, pull him back uh, more to your right. You wanna have him more to your right? Uh, that should work there, that should work. Okay, good. Okay, now we're gonna get the ads. Melee, you can go in there on the ads, but you wanna run out before they die. If they die, then you get knocked back. So Melee wanna run out as they get low, you can AOE these guys. You don't want them to all die at once because then Fraggy's gonna take a ton of damage too. You can AOE them a little bit. Okay, Melee can go ahead and run out. Don't let Moon die in the raid. Don't let Moon die in the raid. Don't hit it, don't hit it. You're gonna get, okay. So you don't wanna hit that because then everybody's gonna get knocked back. And somebody's gonna pull aggro on the Fire Lord. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull the Fire Lord first. And then we're going to kill uh, Axenroth, get X, and then Foking, get uh, get get the other one, get the square. Oh, loot, I forgot the loot. Okay, I normally don't do loot, so I forgot. Binding! Yeah, <laughs> like we leave a binding on there. <laughs> How funny that would be if we just left a binding on the box. The binding. <laughs> so uh, we got Giant Stalker's Helm, Aura Stone Hammer, and Arcanist Crown. Dude, hey, I'm gonna be honest, guys. This raid, this has been a rough raid so far, okay? Uh, I, I think I'm gonna. I'm, I gotta toss back a couple. Uh, a couple pints of moon glow. Just, just to be completely real, dude. It's dope that you're taking the time to teach others. Much respect. Yeah, thanks, dude. Let's talk about the Baron fight real quick. This fight is one of those where if you screw up, you get everybody else killed. You don't want to get everybody else killed. That's not very nice. Uh, how Baron works is he he runs around. He's pissed. Okay, that's like the RP is that he's just running around here and he's super pissed off. Second TPS tank or the second defensive tank. You need to be ready for the pickup. Like your your job is pickups. Pickups are so important. So how this fight works is occasionally he gets pissed off and he starts pulsing fire. So let's talk about positioning. I want all the ranged and healers right here, and then where this fire is. Is, is where the bomb is, okay? So if you get the bomb, he will randomly bomb you at a certain point. It should put a skull on your head if we have somebody with assist with the add-on. But if not, then we're gonna call it out. Hey, you have the bomb, you have the bomb, you have the bomb. Just like on Veil Straws, you need to run out and run over here and prepare to blow up away from everybody. If you are too far to the left in the, in the range stack, then you're gonna get blown up. So you don't want that. If you're a paladin, you can't bubble it. If you're a mage, you can't ice block it. I think it'll stop the damage on you, but it still hits everyone else. So don't try and immune it. Mages can ice block it? Okay. I wasn't sure. I, I've, I've heard somebody else tried it once and they said it didn't work. I would rather them do the mechanics anyway to pay attention. I'm gonna be honest. Oh, dispels. Everybody needs to dispel. I forgot the dispel. If you can dispel, you need to dispel magic right here. Well, out. Move out. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, oh sorry. That was my bad. I miscounted. Fraggy, Fraggy has the bomb. So Foking is gonna tank. Foking is gonna tank. And all the melee are gonna run away. All the melee are gonna run away. Okay, now melee can run back in. It's bad RNG. Now melee run back out. Okay. Miraculous, move out. Oh, too early. Why are you guys My running bad. in? Why are you guys running in? I said count for nine. Okay, get them back in position. We need cleanses. Foking has aggro. Miraculous has aggro. Miraculous again. Yeah, everybody needs to run back because he's not in position. You guys are probably gonna get hit by this. 
Yeah, we need to get a single salve. McDow um, is, yeah, Warlock Druid here. loot. Warlock Druid, uh, who would have known? A couple things there. One, count to nine. I, I saw one of the Goonies run in there, like in the middle of it. You, just, you have to count to nine. I mean, it's better to count short than count high, right? Like I counted short one time. I thought it was eight, whenever it was nine. So how we do tier for, for hunters is uh, we, we like to cascade the tier. That means stack one guy up as fast as possible. Give him first prio on everything and then they get it and then it's good. Because what this does, if you look at this, the eight piece set bonus, you have a chance whenever you deal range damage to apply an exposed weakness effect to the target. Exposed weakness increases range AP of all attackers of at that target by 450 for seven seconds. So this buffs the damage of everyone in the raid. So the more hunters that have this, the more it buffs everyone's damage. How this works out, cascading the tier, it doesn't mean one guy gets eight out of eight before everybody else gets anything. What ends up happening is we have a situation where right now it gets cascaded properly and we have one guy with eight out of eight already, one guy with seven out of eight, which is now two guys with eight out of eight, one guy with six out of eight with no helmet, and then another guy who has six out of eight with a helmet. It ends up like panning out, like it sprinkles down, it rolls down to where everybody is really, really close. Oh, that's tier two, my bad. Uh, increase the damage of multi-shot. So it's the same, it's sorry, I read the tier two thing, but it's the so same idea. It's the same logic for tier two. So what we do is like, if somebody got prio on tier one, we usually put them down a little bit on tier two and then somebody who has lower prio on tier one gets it for tier two. So you wanna use an arcane protection potion on this boss if you have one. He has two real mechanics or three main mechanics. Arcane explosions over and over again. He has a curse that we need to have decreased. Mages, your primary concern on this fight is decurses. You need to have that gone because it makes the amount of arcane damage everyone takes go up by a lot. The next thing he does is a teleport. So whenever he does a teleport, we're doing a two point stack, meaning we're gonna have melee and range. We're gonna have a range, range group and a melee group, okay? Decurse, decurse. I need a decurse. Arcane explosions are going out. I'm not decursed. Melee is not decursed. I got aggro, we need, a, we need a faster taunt and bring him back to this group. You need to separate him again. Guys, get away from his explosion. Yeah, we need to have two separate stacks. This is a fight where we need to make sure that we have people kicking and counterspelling these priests from their heels. And I want us to DPS these priests one by one, and then we're going to get on Sulfur on Harbinger, and then we're gonna kill the Harbinger. And you can AOE these guys, technically, but we're, we're not gonna do that. Braggy, I want you tanking Sulfur on Harbinger away from the other four guys. Spoking tank Skull and Square. Axenroth tank Diamond, and Praise Keanu tank Circle. Yeah, so we need to constantly make sure that we're kicking everybody. We don't want to let heals get through. When we focus on Sylveon on Harbinger, but he doesn't knock back every however many seconds, that is something that, again, you can use a free action potion to, to ignore. So we're on Skull. Fraggy is going to tank the Harbinger away. Let's get some Dispels out. We will need Dispels. Skull is now down, so let's get on Circle. Circle next. Circle next. Circle next. Take the... Next, we're going to get on square. So if I don't call it, if I don't call it yet, and I said square, I did say square, and you guys still killed diamond, okay? If I don't call it yet, attack the guy who's lower health, not the guy who's closer to you. We go and attack the guy who's lower health, and he just dies faster, we can move on. So right here is where you can fap. You can do a free action potion, and you won't get knocked back anymore. Chris of Recklessness, Chris of Shadow, Chris of Elements, what is chill, good. Okay, nice. Shadow and a robe of volatile power too. Very good. We're going to have Golmag tank by Foe King by himself, and all the melee DPS and stuff is going to be on there. Uh, everybody else can stand right here, and they should be just fine DPSing him. There is a mechanic where you need to stop attacking him at a certain amount of stacks. Like you'll get a debuff stack on you that you don't want. I think the number, and I can't even remember, either six stacks or eight stacks. You want to run out, and you want to wait for your stacks to drop, and then you want to keep going. Let's go into the eight stacks. If you hit eight stacks, then you want to run away, wait for the debuff to drop and then run back in. At 5%, Golmag gets pissed and melee need to not stand there, otherwise he'll kill you. So melee need to run out at 5% and then the range need to finish him off. Okay, separate the adds. The adds need to be separated away from the boss. Uh, also, there's a mechanic where you had two tanks on this to where somebody would step in if uh, the tank gets too much. Bloodbath, you pulled aggro, you gotta watch your threat. Mm -hmm. This fight actually has mechanics? It does, I, I just wanna make sure everybody does the mechanics right. See, like my stacks even drop. There, I'm on mana. Okay, so melee would want to run out here. I'm good. Yeah, the damage isn't very much. Okay, so Sulfur and Ingot, Staff of Dominance, really good. Really, really good. And the essence. Okay, so on this fight, we need to have, if you have a Shadow Protection Potion, it's a really good idea to pop a Shadow Protection Potion on this fight because these guys do a Shadow Shock in the second phase. It's like a second mini phase, right? There's kind of two phases to this. First phase, 
We want to have all the healers polymorphed. So this right. is going to be the order. Advice will be star. Ethel Soul will be diamond. Mapu will be triangle. And Prospecto will be moon. Yeah, you guys will all sheep those guys. Fraggy tank Domo. Fraggy, you do normally tank Domo? Yeah. Okay, I thought so. I do. Fraggy will tank Domo. And then next we will have... Actually, Foking will tank Skull. Uh, we'll have Axe and Rock tank uh, Cross. X. Uh, praise Keanu, you tank Square. Can we have somebody else step up and tank Circle? Tank it? Yeah. Yeah, can you tank Circle? All right. Okay, so, right. so Swifty will tank Circle. What this means is if you tank Skull, X, Square, or Circle, your next tank target, whenever we, uh, in kind of the second phase, because you can't sheep them in the second phase after all these guys are dead, uh, is going to be the guy on the inside. So Swifty, after you tank Skull, you want to tank Star. Praise Keanu, after Square, you'll tank Diamond. After X, Triangle, Axenroth, and then uh, after Skull, Moon, Foking. Okay, we're going to AoE the first set of guys. The second set of guys, we don't want to AoE them because of the Shadow Shock, it's going to tear us apart. Phase two, uh, we're going to have the guys tanked separately, and then we're going to kill them one by one. We'll kill them Star, Diamond, Triangle, Moon. As you're all getting DPS horny, get over here. Let the tanks pull it here. Okay, now we can start cleaving these guys down. Get them all stacked up. These guys should be stacked up, Swifty. Swifty, bring them in here. The second set, the second set, we don't want them stacked. Okay, next we're going to get sc uh, Skull and then X. Melee damage filled. Really good job on the Sheep's Mages. Okay, the next set is coming in. We want these guys tanked separately. We want these guys tanked away from each other. Let's start with Star. Let's get on Star. I have aggro. I'm bubbling it. Tornax has it. Magic reflections up. I'm kill yourself. Yeah, there's who's supposed to get star? Silva's got Sorry, it. Sorry, I, I got confused with the diamond. Oh, okay. Okay, star is dead. Let's get uh, let's go and get triangle because it's close in this case. Next we'll get uh next we'll get diamond and then we'll get moon. These guys do a reflect mechanic as well, magic and ma uh, physical reflect. So if you start seeing reflects, you're taking damage back. If you get low on health, you go bandage yourself. All right, good job, clean. That was really, really good. Okay, so fireproof cloak and core forge greaves. I will heal on this fight, and I will still call the ins and outs. Thornheart, you can DPS on this. Melee are gonna be back there. How the ins and outs works. And our tanks know how to do this, so I won't explain the tanking part of this. Uh, but everybody else needs to be paired up. So uh, I will pair up with Prospecto. We need to be here. We're all kind of close right here. Uh, Prospecto, let's move over here. So everybody needs to stack up in twos. If you have a fire protection potion, you can go ahead and use it. I need, I need to put on some healing gear. What can I put on? to heal with. Lawbringer gloves, Lawbringer spalders. Okay, so, I don't even freaking know, dude. Um, there's a little intellect on it. Trey, can you do the in and out calls? Uh, I, I can do the ins and outs. Oh. Okay, okay. Yeah, well actually somebody else do them. Somebody else do them. Uh, so how, how the ins and outs work, and let me explain for the melee why the ins and outs happen. You wanna run out before he says, taste the flames of Sulfuron, which he says every 30 seconds. If he says, taste the flames of Sulfuron, he does an AOE knockback. This is a resistible knockback. If the tank resists it, then you can run back in. If he doesn't resist it, then you have to wait for the other tank to come back in uh, in order to hold it, hold rag until you can come back in. So everybody runs out, then run back in whenever the other tank is in there. As a melee, from your vantage point, it's kind of hard to see what the tank is doing. But what you can do is you can look at your target of target and you can see that Rag is targeting the other tank or targeting one of the tanks. If you're not in melee range of him, he starts hitting the guy who's on the top of his threat list who's in melee range. If not, then he starts hitting other people who are outside throwing fireballs at them. So you want to wait until one of the tanks is in there and then you can move back in. Got it. Other than that, I think we should be okay. I As don't fan, have what a What about uh, positioning? What part of positioning? You guys are in good position uh, right now. I guess uh, for healers, do we have, like, does, does the tank have a specific healer? Uh, I will be on Paladins. Okay, so let's do this. Let's have Vitatus and McDowell. Vitatus will be on Foking. McDowell will be on Fraggy. I will be on Fraggy. Bailgar will be on Foking. That's how we'll do this. Uh, Nullbreaker, Miraculous, Xanatar. You guys are raid heals. Priests are raid heals as well. Uh, try and throw a shield on the yeah. tanks whenever they're swapping in. Can, uh, Praise Keanu, can you start the event? It's a dope healing maze, thanks. <laughs> totally scuffed, dude. Totally scuffed. This is so weird, like, from a healer perspective. I'm doing literally, like, rank three Holy Light right now. Fraggy, speak up a little bit on the ins and outs. Texting audio, I didn't hear you anything. Were doing oh, no, no, I said, I said you do it. I don't want to do it. Run out. Repop your potion. Go in. So you notice how I'm not getting knocked back that much? It's because I have so much fire resist. Uh, 36 fire resist. Almost done. Good job, guys. And the essence. Oh, yes. And the essence, dude. Oh. 
All right, all right. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's see what drop. So we got the SNs for the Thunder Fury quest. Wow. Very good. Wow. Onslaught Girdle, Judgment Legs, Double Judgment Legs, Onslaught Girdle, and Crown of Destruction. That's really good. That's really good. Essence of the Fire Lord. Yes, we got Essence of Fire Lord for the Thunder Fury quest. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You can repair real quick, and then we're gonna move out. Meet at the meet the Fly Path immediately. 